I have to recognize something. My volume in the last episode, last video, was probably atrocious. I apologize. I apologize. So what is today's video about? This is something that I've been asked about quite a few times as a comic artist. I have been asked multiple, multiple times, how the hell do I set up and get started with making my comic in Clip Studio Paint? So first off, off rip, you guys need to understand that I don't do webtoons. I don't make webtoons. I have no intention of making webtoons. I am a traditional comic artist. I make traditional comics, um, traditional style comics, just digitally. Uh, if you didn't know, I am the author of several comics that are out in the world right now. My main one being Stars Burn Out. My published one being Mushrooms Grew From Their Hands, which I do intend to expand into a bigger universe. And uh, my adult series, which is called Opaque Intentions. And just other, other various little things. But... With my qualifications off to the side, now I can actually answer the question. How the hell do I set up my comic in Clip Studio Paint? So, first things first that you need to know is how big is your comic? Is your comic for digital release only or do you intend to print it at some point? If the answer is either, here's what I personally recommend because it changes from person to person. It really does depend on the person. I recommend that you work in a print size regardless of if you are planning to print it or not. That is an issue that I had when I was making Stars Burn Out. I had major issues when it came to actually making the comic and now I'm at a point where I'm like, well, I kind of want to make it into a printed comic and I've been planning for that, but all of my pages are the wrong size for print, which means that it's going to be more work than I intended. And that's a whole situation. So that is the first question. What size are you going to be working at? Next question is, what style are you going to be working in? Are you going to be like me and do a traditional style comic? Are you going to do a uh, illustrative narrative comic where you just do illustration 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 that tells a story throughout a series of illustrations or are you doing a webtoon these are the things that you have to ask yourself when you're setting up because if you're doing either it doesn't matter what option you're going for you have to know what orientation you're going to go for so step one open up a new canvas you can do file new, or if you have the quick command right here, uh, the little paper with the plus sign on it, you can click that and that opens your new canvas dialog box. Now you're going to look up here and you're going to be intimidated. That's just how it is. I can't help you with that intimidation. It kind of comes with the territory, right? I personally, personally always go to show all comic settings. This gives you the broadest spectrum of comic setting customization possible, but I will show you guys the rest of them. So this is Webtoon. It asks you how big you're gonna do it, what the number of pages is, and all that stuff. Now, when it says number of pages, it's not saying how many page by page are you doing. It's how many of the longer format panels do you need for your episode. It also comes with preset sizes. Um, you have Webtoon 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it looks like 1 is going to be your smallest and 4 is going to be your biggest. I will say I know nothing about Webtoons. I know nothing about the production of Webtoons. And if that is the style that you're wanting to do, I recommend you go and find some of the other artists on YouTube that specifically do Webtoons. There's tons. I've personally watched tons, so I can't really memorize every single one that I've watched. I mostly watch them for their art creation, but there's a lot of people, especially now, um, 
with broader international art audiences that will and have made tutorials on how to make webtoons. Um, but these are your settings. This is where you choose your paper color. If you want to use a template, there's templates that Clip Studio has to offer. Um, you don't have to use those if you don't want to, but they're there if you want them. This is your comic settings. These are all preset. It's a lot more rigid than, um, than the custom one. You can't change the measurement unit from uh, millimeters to inches or the centimeters. It, it doesn't give you that option when you're going directly to comic. This is the next option, which is printing for fanzines or printing for a printed comic. This helps out a lot. It gives you the cover layout, how it's going to be formatted, like on the actual, um, when you actually print it, how it's going to be formatted there. Uh, what is the purpose? It's just general purpose settings. It gives you options to like add a home page, stuff like that. You can change the number of pages and it automatically includes a cover, a front and back cover. Your number of pages is going to be the front and back page plus whatever your interior pages is. So you see how I wrote, how I clicked 12. It'll be four cover pages. So your exterior front cover, your interior front cover, your interior back cover, and your exterior back cover, plus eight body pages. So the pages inside that actually have the content on it. The last setting is the custom comic setting that I was telling you guys about. This is what I use. That's why all the settings are changed and all the fun stuff is uh, switched up. This is how I make my sketchbooks as well. So I don't click any comic settings. I don't click any story information settings and I don't click any folio settings. I don't even click cover pages because I personally like to do my covers separate from the actual comic. Here is what I recommend. If you are making a comic, at home, you're going to be printing it one of two ways. You're going to be printing it side by side next to each other, which means it's going to be about five and a half by eight, or you're going to be printing it page by page, sheet by sheet, and then you'll staple it in the corner if that's what you want to do. I recommend, hear me out, you go just a little bit bigger than that. So if you're doing like eight and a half by 11, I say go to nine. 9.5 so you have a half inch on each side by 12. so that just adds an extra inch onto your actual um onto your actual canvas size it keeps the ratio the same but it just adds an extra half inch on each side both the left and right and top and bottom i'm going to turn my pa number of pages down to four and then I'm going to go ahead and hit this button here. And this will pull up your window management uh, so you can pick where that's gonna go. This is a perfect opportunity for me to show you guys what actually is inside a comic management file. Or I thought it would be here. Let me just open the Window Explorer. And while, I, while that opens, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my folder for this year and I'm going to use this one I'm just going to call it comic underscore example please 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 and I know there are other artists out there that have said the same thing that I'm about to say name your files name your files name your layers it will help you so much in the long run those headaches that you keep getting because you don't know what you're doing literally just name your files and name your layers, it'll save you a world of trouble. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK, and that's going to make our comic. It's It might take a second. My com my computer takes a little bit uh, to generate it. Some people's computers just generate it like lickety split, but mine doesn't. <laughs> so we got to wait for her. So this is what your comic management file will look like. You will have your pages 
lined up. I have mine personally, I have it set to webcomic format. If you go to story and then go down to view, you can change it to page by page. And then this little dialogue box will pop up. So you can do whichever one you feel right, uh, feel comfortable with. It'll do its little thing, do a little buffer, and then it changes it. So this is what page by page looks like. And it'll just go all the way across your screen. My screen is kind of large, so um, that's why there's so much empty room. But it'll go all the way across, no matter how many pages you have. It just goes boom, 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 boom. So if we open this, it'll open in its own window on the side. And then you'll have all your pages off to the side. Hi, everybody. This is Editing Eggs here. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. I realized that during this video, I did a lot of rambling with a lot of side information that really wasn't necessary. So I decided to cut it short here. Um, essentially, what I wanted to show you guys was how to, you know, at least get started on setting your comic up in Clip Studio Paint. I do intend to teach do like longer lessons with comics but for now I just wanted to show you guys that it's not as difficult as you'd think to set up your comic in Clip Studio. Hey thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an upload. Want to support the channel? Go check out my coffee page. Monthly supporters and returning supporters get access to exclusive artwork, private live streams, and a secret store. If you want more videos why don't you go ahead and click one of these two recommended videos right here. And I'll see you next time.